Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us this week. We're going to be talking about true liberty. We're going to talk about how to build a relationship with your horse that keeps him with you wherever you are all of the time. We're going to cover all of that right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind And climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse I'm Gonna take a ride on one true horse First thing I want to talk about is tools and equipment you're going to use today. I'm going to use three different tools. The first one is the round pen. Uh, the round pen is a tool. It's a nice place to pen a horse too, that's fine, but it's a tool and it should be used as a tool. For the exercise we're doing today, I hope that you have already covered the basic round pen exercises so that you would know and your horse would know exactly what your body positioning means in here. We're going to go forward from that and advance that process a little bit. The second tool I'm going to be using is my rope. You don't have to use a rope. You can use a uh, lunge whip or you can use a lunge line and throw it at him. I don't care what you use. To me, the lariat's real handy. I'm comfortable with it. I'm accustomed to it. It's a tool I use every day and I'm going to continue to use it. And thirdly, I'm going to use a dressage whip or a livestock whip or a buggy whip, something that's pretty soft, pliable, and bendable and not real hard. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I don't use a fiberglass stick, and I'm gonna be real honest with you. I don't think it's necessary for the few times that I use something in my hand like this. I hate to spend 40 or $60 to buy something that I can go down to the feed store and buy for 10 or 12. So for as rarely as I use something like this, it's just not worth it to me. My goal today is to show you how to get this horse to where he's glued to you all the time. And Stormy and I have had uh, six years uh, together. He's been just uh, seven years actually, I guess, six and a half years. I bought him as a weanling. He's been a fantastic horse. He knows the round pen inside and out, but he's not perfect at coming to me at a trot. He's not perfect at staying with me at Liberty. So we're gonna work on that. And, and why I call it true Liberty, to me, it's really important that this horse have the choice to leave or to stay. And so that's why there's nothing on his head. When I start on my advanced groundwork and really trying to get this horse soft and with me right here, I don't want to be holding on to his head and keeping him to me. I want him to have a conscious decision to make and when he makes that decision to stay with me, then we're gonna be that much further down the road. So I'm gonna start by sending him off with the rope and I'll move him around a little bit and then I'm gonna call him back into me. You can see his attention's kind of distracted by the manure on the ground and he just came back in after all summer being out with the mares. I pasture breed my stud horses because I believe it's the way they should be. I believe they're naturally intended to be out that way. So this is kind of just a chance to review. And people ask me a lot of times, Ken, how much should I use the round pen? How much can I use the round pen? You know, I've seen horses just driven nuts in a round pen where somebody just round pens them every day for no reason. And Pretty soon, see he's got plenty of nonsense in him. Pretty soon that horse is just crabby and sullen. So what I wanna do is use it when I think just like that, that there's maybe a little attitude left from being independent all summer. So I wanna come back in and say, hey, I know you were the king of the pasture, but it turns out I'm the king of your life. So kinda of come to class here. And then what I want him to do when I step back and call to him, I want him to come to me at a trot. And if he doesn't come to me at a trot, I'm gonna send him off. Well, he's trotted the first five steps. Yeah, he did, he trotted the very first five steps. I want him to trot to me. He can slow down the last couple of steps, but not halfway. 
That was better. Good. Good. Yeah. I'll just kind of reward on him. I want his attention on me, not on everything around him. Right now I'm going to be really uh, demanding about that. Right there he's deciding maybe he'd like to leave. Come on back up to me. I'll invite him back, but anytime he decides he wants to leave, that's okay with me. Good boy. Good boy. I want him to stay with me everywhere I go here. Then what I'm going to do is just ask him out away, but then bring him right back. What I'd like him to do is not have to go clear to the rail before he comes back to me. I want to start being able to call him into me closer and closer so that I get rid of my tools. Okay, I want to eliminate the tools. I want to use the rope less, I want to use the round pen less. Send him off. There we go. And I'll just keep asking that over and over again. The way I'm going to make that happen is I'm going to keep asking him to go out and then come back. Right there. And pretty soon he figures out the idea is we don't have to go too terrible far. Now send him the other way. Just get him to come right back. Good boy. Come on back in here and stay with me. And when he comes back, I'm going to just really lean on him and just pet on him and tell him, boy, what a good horse you are. Remember what you do on one side, you got to do on the other side. So we practice to the left a few times. Bring him back in. And you notice on this side, he's still going out pretty far. He's a little sluggish coming back in, so I'm going to work on that. Tune that up. But each time he comes back to me, if I'm satisfied with what he did, I want to love on him long enough that he understands that. If I just get to harping on him and sending him out, sending him out, sending him out, pretty soon he's going to get afraid of me and he's going to want to just stay out there and he thinks that's the answer. That's where he finds the most release. That was better. He didn't go near as far before he came back to me. And what I'd like to end up doing is just getting a really nice consistent circle around me here without him actually leaving the country. Right here, I've got him a little confused. Good, right there. I was able to stretch it and get half of a circle just with him kind of looking at me and starting to thinking about, he's done all of the groundwork that we have in the groundwork lessons for every horse. And he's covered all of the groundwork that we would do on a halter and lead rope. So it's time to kind of progress and move on. I'm going to keep him moving. Right there at a nice walk. Right there. Good boy. And you notice my hand is kind of out here. That just seems to be a cue that works for, for him and I. And I'd like to get my hand back in. But right now I noticed that I'm doing that. And it's kind of helping hold him. So I'll just keep working on that just a little bit. There we go. Keep that movement up. No, don't leave. I'll ask again. Right there, okay. We're gonna get a little bit of a smart alley going. And he's just kinda like, hey, I'm gonna go have fun. So I'll push him off. Right here's where you use that third tool, or that first tool, the round pen. And push him out here and say, hey, how much more fun was it in here with me before you got smart? Then I'll bring him right back around where he was and I'll ask that same question. Ah, 
Huh? Ask him back. Ask him back. Ask him back. There we go. Ah. He's just not quite sure what the answer is. I'll let him walk. Okay, he missed the answer, so I'm going to send him out. He's just kind of, again, full of himself, having fun. So that's all right. Don't get excited or upset over that kind of stuff. Let him be a horse. Make sure you never take the horse out of the horse, okay? Don't, don't ever take the try and the desire out of your horse to where his ears are pinned and he's crabby and he's mechanical. I look forward to my horse having that. When he comes back into me this time, I'm gonna go ahead and pet on him. Let him know he's got the right answer for a minute or two. Remind him, stay in here was the idea. This is where the good stuff is, okay? Drive him off. Good, there's what I want. You notice I can't hardly drive him off. Bring him back. Good, right there, I'm gonna stop him because here's where he runs off every time. So I got a half of a circle there with a nice movement. So I just pet on him. Yeah. Bring him back to me. Just kind of continue this dance. There, bring him back. Bring him right around here. Good. Right there, we were able to stop him. He was thinking about leaving. We'll build on it again. Tell him, hey, good job. Okay, so continuing on our goal, we've got this horse moving around us pretty good. And what I really want to do is keep him to me. So I kind of step to his eye and call to him right there and bring him back to me. I'll step off of his eye to bring him in, but I want to keep him moving around me. I want to get this horse making a nice circle around me. So when I feel like he's leaving, you'll notice I step to his eye just like I would with the halter and lead rope. If I lose him, I'm going to push him off, then step to his eye, remind him to come on back here. Move around me, keep that eye on me, and I'll pull back on his eye right here, pulling back with my body just like I would in the round pen process. Good, and then just stop him right there by stepping to his eye. That's our first full circle. He went all the way around there really nice. It was slow, we were at a walk, but here in a, a very short amount of time, not necessarily today, but you're gonna be able to do the whole uh, lunging exercise, anything that we would do in groundwork, without the halter and lead rope on him. He knows that exercise, he knows the round pen exercise. I combine, combine the two, put them together, Change directions, send him around me, change directions, ah, step to that eye, bring him back, he runs off like that, drive him around me, there, I really love to see that bend, go back to that circle, we're lunging him around here, I'm going to step back out of that picture and over here to his eye. There, right there. He figured, he got the directional change, then he left. What's the lesson? Learn to stay in close, stay where the release is. I wanna get one thing at a time. There, that was good. Let him know this is where he wants to be. Good. Start him around there nice and soft. Grab that eye, just like you would on that halter and lead rope. If you wanted to stop that horse, what would you do? You'd step out into that eye, okay? 
So when this horse starts to leave, you step out into that eye. Make that change of direction. Start him lunging around you the other way. He's coming around there. Step out into that eye. Right there. Good. Now just take my time. I don't push him too hard. Lunge him around there. Step out into that eye. Bring him up. Now was that perfect? Was that what I'd want it to be in a night show somewhere and at an expo? No. That's the training stage. That's him trying. Remember, how do you, how do you reward your horse? You reward everything that's a try. And, and how do you teach your horse? You teach him through reward. So the more you reward him, do you have to pet on him? No, you can just release him. But this horse loves to be petted on. He likes to be up close and personal. So give him what really is a release to him. Drive him off. Push him around here, push him around here, push him around, step to that eye. Back up, change directions. Push that shoulder forward now with my body a little bit, widen in the circle. Push him forward, push him forward, step to that eye. Back up, change direction. Push into that shoulder a little bit, move his body out, move his body out, step to that eye. Almost lost him, bring him back, change directions. Lunge him around me here, step to that eye. Anytime I think I'm gonna lose him, I'm gonna step up into that eye. Good boy. Good boy. What have we put into the 17 minutes? Uh, 17 or 18 minutes we've spent just working on teaching him to read our body without any aid other uh, touching him other than his, his emotions. We've used two of the three tools. We've used the rope so that I could reach him out there on the rail. We've used the round pen. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna pick up number three, which is the, the dressage whip. And this is gonna help me. I'm gonna be able to send him off a little more specifically. Send him around there. And it also weans him from the visual in my hand. Move him around, speed him up, step to that eye. Change directions, much faster change of directions. I'm gonna step up here to that eye, keep pushing him, but you notice I didn't have enough bend? He was starting to straighten out, so I stepped up here to that eye and pulled on his brain and said, come on, come to me. Step up here to that eye, stop him, change directions. Bring him back in, keep that speed up, stop him, change directions. Step out here to his eye, keep that speed up. I like that speed, just don't leave. Look at the difference even when he's out close to that rail. His eyes are on me. Speed him up a little bit, stop him. Change directions. Push that shoulder off me with the stick a little bit. Just use that dressage whip to just kind of push that shoulder. And that's exactly the truth. I said, use the stick, because that's honestly how I grew up. When I was a kid doing these exercises, lots of times what I could afford was to go down to the creek and cut a stick off a willow tree. And that's what I would use. And that's why I don't worry about uh, carrying or selling sticks. I know you could say that about all tech. It's all replaceable with something. Uh, and we just choose what it is that we'll use and not use. But for me, I can just as easily use this that cost me a few bucks. All right, good job. He's right here where I want him to be. And he's got the basics of lunging absolutely at liberty with nothing on his head, just simply by taking the two exercises we've done in the past, the round pen basics work that's in the round pen basics tape, and the groundwork that's in our groundwork series. And we've put the two of them together. We've taken the lead rope off and the halter off and thrown it away, but we've held the cues that we taught him that way. And we've put it together in one session. And in 20 minutes, all of a sudden, we've got a horse who understands how to go forward, change directions, go the other direction, look at us, stop. It's basic, but from here, 
we can take it anywhere. Now all of a sudden, we can move any part of his body because the, the lessons stayed absolutely the same. Now he just learned And if, if he leaves me, I'll send him off. Then all of a sudden, it's real easy to make the whole thing come together. Good. Step out here to his eye and bring him back. And then walk over here and just say, Stormy, oh, easy, lie down. And really, all we did was just take hundreds of hours of training, take the halter off, throw it away, and in 22 minutes, put together kind of a fun deal that now, if we practice every day, starts to look pretty neat and becomes a pretty cool program, that if you never do anything more with it, then, then enjoy it with your horse. That's enough. We took the issue of trust and the laying down, we combined it, with the round pen basics and the groundwork series. And all of a sudden this horse had the opportunity to run foolishly around the outside of the pen and act like I didn't exist. And a couple of times he took it. But as is the case for all Americans, he discovered that truly, even though freedom has a cost and it's high a lot of times, it's really worth it for the reward we get in the long run. Thanks so much for joining us. And remember, the best way to enjoy these horses is with your family. Until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance. Take a ride on one true horse. I'm gonna take a ride on one true horse.